Support for this podcast comes from the patrons at patreon.com slash FML FPL. Could could have, maybe, should have a fucking kid with the score that I put up this week. I mean, you're shitting this morning. How good did that smell? How good did (laughs) your shit smell this morning? Oh my God. You just like lifted the lid and put your head in the toilet bowl to smell it. It was so good. It's just so comical. When like these <laughs> random weeks happen, we're just like, like me and you are DMing. We're not even in Fest and Discord because it's just too much of a cesspit, and every game's on fucking Peacock. And I'm just like, what? How scored? Like what? Like this thing happened? Like this is ridiculous. Like how am I getting these points? <laughs> all in all, it's just like holy fucking shit. I'm flying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially because I mean, half your team blanked, and you still got 91 half points. Half my team blanked. Not- not the most common occurrence, but I you think know, you this hit. is the highest ever game single game week rank I've had in my life. Two thousand yeah. seven hundred forty is fucking ridiculous. You have two and, yeah. weeks to savor it. And like you said, I have Bumo <laughs> Blank, Colo Blank, Sun Blank, Holland Blank, Alvarez Blank. That is you those things are usually not <laughs> one and the same. Best game yeah. week rank of your life and five player five of your eleven blank. Insane. But yeah. uh yeah, it's it's good. It's feeling good. That's for I mean, sure. You you're holding strong with not wild carding and getting the two palace defenders has been insane Dude, for you. Palace. Palace. Fly Eagles fly. The good the good Eagles, not the NFL Eagles that can fuck yeah. off. Yeah, I mean we have four cleans and eight. It's pretty good. I shouldn't I should just pop my team up, I guess, while we're talking about it. But yeah, that's the team this week. Ninety fucking one points. Bruno Damato. Easy and uh, yeah, everything else just fell in place. Captain yeah. Mo didn't start Turner again, Raz, thank god. Didn't start Turner, <laughs> even though he did clean <laughs> Powell. That's ridiculous, yeah, Raz, ridiculous week. We ho- hold all Raz, Pow. You're just everything we came in. Hold Raz, Mo 15, double, Easy. double 15 equals 30. Good, Easy. good job by you. Good job by yeah. you, buddy. Great, great job by me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Flying. I went from two million ninety six thousand to two hundred and one thousand. Is that good? One point nine million up. Damn. Seems seems good. Let's seems pull up good. Faith and Nergison here. Still hasn't been in the squad yet. Team Walsh. He still hasn't even been on the bench. <laughs> no zero bench appearances. Every that's uh-huh. the first thing I check every time the palace. Graphic is shown. I look at the bench to see Ferguson. It hasn't been. I, there yet. Remind me, has he ever played? I think he's played like ten minutes. Wow! Like you that. know what's crazy when you type in Nathan space Nathan comes F up? on FB Ref, it doesn't even autofill Nathan Ferguson. That's how Whoa. made up of a player he is. <laughs> what if you type Faith and N? <laughs> Faith and Ferguson, <laughs> then it comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, failed teams or something. That's fucking crazy. Oh, yeah, he's played one match in the Premier League for Palace. It was in 2021 season, and he played yeah. nine minutes. That was close. Since then, yeah, he's just played in the PL2, and he's barely even touched 400 minutes in the PL2 in like fucking F1, F2. three years. Yeah, like it's, it's <laughs> this guy is just insane. <laughs> Uh, I love him. I love him yeah, so much. Yeah, he's great. Um, had the team do this week, though. Yeah, I mean, you still had a good week. No, it was not good. It was bad. Um, I mean, you, know, you Captain had a nice, Sun. nice big green, right? I don't know. Captain I so. Sun, I got 57 points. I'm yeah, pretty bad. You had a we, we million place green, by the way. That doesn't feel like anything. But, uh, you know, you blank cap, and that's, where, that's how it goes. You know, just kind of trying to mask over the... Failties there, but it could have been worse. Could have kept Holland like a fucking monsoon. At least I didn't do that. <laughs> At least uh, I didn't do that, baby. It just, yeah. It, it, obviously, I scored a billion points, so it doesn't seem good. But compared to everyone else, this is really good. I mean, having Mo is still a differential. You know, you got a Darwin return. Having Maddo still good. You got six. Having fucking 
Vandavan 15 is huge. Dude, we're it's fucking just, gods with the Vandavan POW goals, by the way. These are the differences, though. It's like, when you Captain Blank, you're not going to really have a big week, period. I mean, you up a I mean? million is whatever. Like, it's early in the season. Your rank was already terrible. I agree with you. It's not like, oh, my God, you had some fucking yeah. amazing week. And yeah, I mean, so I'm you, getting you seven or eight your, more points. It's not Yeah, you limit your whatever. ceiling, but it's still a good week. Like, it's yeah. still... A productive, good week, heading in the right direction. Good. Picks. You're trying you to got sell me magic beans. I'm not. You're, I'm really you're not. magic. You're a magic bean salesman right now. I mean, picks. <laughs> picks said, "How does it feel to be the 4.5 defender whisperers?" Because we both are. And then Slim Charles yeah. said, "Why are you guys so good at picking defenders? Can we get some tips?" I mean, historically. Yeah, we might be the best in the world at just picking one <laughs> percent on four point five defenders. We've done yeah. this for eight years now. Like, every, every this is at where we make our money for sure. Yeah, <laughs> no one not else good at five point five these? midfielders. Not oh, good at no. that. <laughs> Fucking five million keepers. I can get fucked. I'm yeah. a nightmare. But like, no one else even thinks about this position. And me and you are always have always have a couple differentials that no one owns, and they're just great. I mean, even yeah. the start of the season, Rico Henry, Gahey, like, great. You know, yep. and then we're pow, great, Vandevin, great. Just keeps happening over and over again. Good job by us. Yeah, yeah. I think there, I mean, it's just, you have to kind of read things between the lines. And obviously, you, there's so much luck involved in these types of things. But so it's a combination of, I mean, we actually use transfers on defense. I think a lot of people kind of try to shy away from that and... Yeah. When you are able to get the four or five defenders for the mini good fixture runs, I mean, that's when they tend to get points, right? So that's sort of, that goes hand in hand. Um, yeah, and, you self-fulfilling know, it, it, prophecy a little bit there, right? It's like, yeah. if you use transfers on four or fives, then you should do better on your four or fives because you're actually right. spending resources to make it better. Right, right, right. And, you know, yeah, it does take, I mean, we. I think that's where it, it helps us, you and I, because we watch so much. And, you know, we do get a good sense of teams and individual players and what, what we think is going to happen with the defenses. Yeah. And we, so we spend a lot of time on that. So, you know, it, it does take also, you know, going to the second page of the defender. You know, you're not just looking at the top yeah. 10 or 15 point scores and like, oh, this guy's four or five or four or six. I can afford him. Just get him in. Like, you have to think about it, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of things like that. So, yeah, a it's lot fun. Of things like that. It's funny. Yeah, Captain C was obviously guys. split this week. I mean, the uh, among yeah. the elite teams, Sun sixty two percent, Mo twenty four percent, Holland eight yeah. percent. Yeah, it was all over the place. I think. The, well, we'll talk more about the Spurs game later. Let me do. Uh, oh fuck, I forgot to do league updates. We're doing a weird daytime pod, so I'm a little out of my rhythm. Oh wait, first before league updates, I got to do September mug winners. Uh, we can do it last pod yet because of the double game week. So I got to shout out the mug winners. Uh, first place, Nikki Blair, a.k.a. The Mask of Poro. Second place, Blake Matthew, a.k.a. Yank FC. And third place, Corbin Poole, a.k.a. Chill FC. I'll message all of you for the details, you know, so I can ship a mug out to you ASAP. Uh, great fucking job by you. And now, let's see the mug league leaders for... October so far. Oh, first place. This is going to be save us a ton on shipping. Oh, <laughs> it might be me. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Easy mug this month. <laughs> fucking free mug for me. Oh, uh, second place, Simon Bibby, aka the Mighty Bibbs. Also tied for second, Lucas Burns, aka Burns. And third place, Alex Krupiak, aka Chelsea's Back, baby, which is interesting. <laughs> interesting yeah, team name by you. And, uh, Public League leader, Stefan Hofseth, a.k.a. I don't know how to say that. I'm not going to try. Good job by everyone there. Where would you like to begin? Well, you want to go with Spurs. I think there is an interesting conversation we could have about just the captaincy this week and, you know, yeah, yeah. trying Let's to see. look Let's after it that. because yeah. we're going to have a lot of similar weeks in the next, like, six game yeah. weeks. So I think nailing this split. down and being consistent in how you process and pick is going to be important here. So um, so how did it, you know, what do you see here? How did it go? How were, how was our process behind our decisions? Like, why did you end up on Mo? I ended up on Sun. Let's, let's go through it. Well, the... 
the cheap sort of answer is I think that we were both kind of right. I mean, like, first 10, 15 minutes, if you had Rich or Captain Son, and you're just so unlucky. Like, Rich should have braced. You know, Poro should have scored his big chance, which would have been a Son assist. Son had a couple of chances. But even more to the point is floodgates, right? Like, if they make it 2-0 in the first 15 minutes, that could be five, right? Like, that is... Everything that we may have been a little bit worried about, maybe me more than you worried about, would have been thrown out the window completely. Completely different game. Sun's probably the best captain, right? Like it's, it's almost like to check your process. You have to say, okay, you, me personally, right? Like I'm a little more mo. I think it's going to be a more open game. You know, I don't love Spurs against the low block. But if you also had told me in the sixth minute, Spurs make it one nil. I'm capping some. I mean, no fucking shot. Like I, I would have. That would have been a way more than enough to elevate me to cap Sun over Mo. Just knowing that the game is. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're they're getting going early. Sun's probably involved in that first goal anyway. Like that's enough for me. But then chances are missed sometimes. You know that happens all the time. And especially after, when Rich is in the team. Especially when Rich and Poro are the two guys getting the chances yeah. and not Son and Matto, right? And so then that's why I said like we're both kind of right because after that first flurry, I mean they just didn't create shit. I think like Van de Ven chance was actually the next best chance they created and that was like the 60th minute or something. And like yeah. Son couldn't get involved in the game at all. He wasn't getting shots. He wasn't really getting involved. Luton actually had a some decent chances after the Vandeman goal. And obviously the red card, you know, fucked up Spurs and they kind of subbed all their guys off and just played defense for the last 30 minutes of the game. So in a sense, I think we were both right. I don't know if we learned, well, you can always trust Mo more because of the 90 minutes, because they're always all out attacking. I don't know. The red card kind of just changed that, right? Like, what does the second half look like if they're at 11 men? Hard to say, you know? Yeah. I think the just walking away from it with like, what is Luton, you know? Yeah. Like you mentioned, the first 15 minutes was just flurry, complete destruction. And then That's Luton it. sort of caught up to speed and were able to do some sort of nullify a little bit. And, you know, Spurs maybe just kind of dropped off a little bit. I mean, I thought there were, I mean, Matto, I thought was one of the worst players on the pitch in that game. Um, Until the goal. Generally, yeah, the goal, he had a nice action and movement on the goal. But broadly, yeah. pretty much every forward pass he attempted was either overcooked, undercooked, or to the other team. Yeah, And that, I thought, was the biggest issue for them and why they kind of didn't function for most of the game. And yeah, the red card, you know, I mean, how do you how do you come to terms with the red card right after halftime? You, you know, it's, you can't. And like I think said, it was right the, before the early, halftime, and then he made right the halftime yeah, sub of right, Rich, right, right, right? It just right, fucked right, everything right. up. Yeah, it, it was a mess. And yeah, Sun definitely was, you know, quite invisible. I mean, this team clearly will never win a penalty the, the whole season. But <laughs> I think Luton are still just bad, you know. And I, I yeah. did, and you know, I did feel okay after the game, just thinking like, you know, Luton are bad. They were bad yeah. for a long time. Spurs didn't play their best game, and you know, it was one of those. You know, like there were the early big chances missed, and whereas in the Liverpool Brighton game, I mean. It's a penalty. It's, you know, Harvey Elliott to leave that for him is, I couldn't believe he left that for him. The game, he didn't do anything. You know, Mo didn't really do much of anything. You know, he, pa he made a couple passes, but broadly speaking, you know, it's not like he was just getting chance after chance either. No. You know, the, he it, took, the volume wasn't there, but the yeah. actual quality of the chances was there. You know, like he, he had a lot of Oh, it was a XG. pen and a tap in. It was Basically. yeah, it wasn't a tab, but it was a big chance. Yeah, and he yeah. had he had one other decent chance too. And yeah, he yeah. just he just happened to score him. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean it still was like Brighton were on top for large stretches of the game. Yeah. Like I still prefer I mean, for me personally, like I still totally. prefer knowing that it's like this team is way better than that team. Hopefully there's an early goal in. Like this can be five or six yeah. versus like these are two really good teams playing each other. I don't know. You know, and yeah. there yeah. the game was more open. Definitely. I mean the ten men nullifies it, but the game was more open. It was more up and down, the Liverpool game compared to the Spurs yeah. game. And also, you know, things broke well for Mo. You know, I, I think it's more totally. as like, how do we move forward with this? You know, like, what do we yeah, do I mean, with the this thing is forward? like, 
you know, Mo got the point. So obviously everyone's saying, oh, this was right and that was wrong. But right. all of his stuff came in the first half. And the Liverpool kept creating chances, but Mo wasn't involved, right? Like the right. Graven Birch was Sobo to, to grab. I think it was a Darwin hockey assist, right? And there was a, there was a couple, there was like a Diaz chance. There was a Darwin chance, both from Rabo. Like Mo really had no shouts of an attacker in return. Maybe a small, you know, like a de- one decent shot in the second half of the game. But everything yeah. came in the last five minutes of the first half. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I mean, it was yeah. five. It was a five minute, ten minute period. Yeah, you know, that's, that's it. And yeah, Brighton yeah. just and Brighton do kind of do that. To be fair, right? Like yeah. Brighton are classic. Oh, we'll look good for seventy five percent of the game, and we'll have a complete meltdown in the other twenty five percent. But unless yeah, if they play I mean, Villa. And they just get they just keep melting down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they were they were in a ninety minute well, state of meltdown. Yeah, and that's a, that's kind of another wrinkle to this impossible to answer question, right? Is like okay, Gravenberch has a fucking sitter off the post in five minutes after halftime or something. What happens then? Yeah, right. It's three one. Yeah, maybe Mo gets two more huge chances. I could see that. You know, Brighton have, have shown us that, right? So that's like. The other kind of a counter argument, but you know, yeah. all all in all, I don't think Sun was a bad cap. I don't think the way the game went said you were wrong and this was bad. You know, it was so close to being a fucking demolition. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we have this basic same question next week with Spurs home Fulham, Holland home BHA. The week. Right. 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 Where do you what so, are you seeing on that? I mean, I'm sticking to my priors, I think. And as of now, I'm on Suncap. I mean, I okay. was so saying... I'm on Holland Cap. Yeah, I was saying last week... I don't that, think Fulmer that bad. Yeah, I was saying that last week that like the low blocks have given them trouble. And, you know, the 10 minutes they didn't and the, nine, the 80 other minutes they did. And the teams that are open, like Fulham, are just the best games imaginable for both Matto and Sun. How open um, are they? I feel like That's we both we have question. a different read on Fulham, I, you and I. I also try and not watch them, so you know yeah. this could be like dated information. But I do feel yeah. like they press a bit, and I do feel like Milva usually goes for it. Um, but I, I could be wrong. I need to like look at data to try and support this. And if okay. I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, and I'll be on Holland. You know, okay. Um, probably I mean, not Mo, which is like another funny thing is that. So many people are probably like, oh, Mo just fucking hauled oh, yeah, ass in his home Everton. Yeah, and me and you were like, option. absolutely yeah, not. That's not an option. <laughs> absolutely yeah, I mean, not. Fulham, it's hard to get a, get a hold of them because they're yeah. obviously bad and watching they're them so sucks. Bad. They're so bad. They're bad in such different ways. Each game, they're bad in different ways. Yeah. You yeah. know, they don't get taken to the woodshed very often, though, except for earlier this season when they went to City and they lost 5-1. Right. Other than that, you know, it's been yeah, and, and they've um, been Leno's been really good. Yeah, Leno's been good, and I don't think they had Polina for that game. That's correct. They did not have Polina for that yeah, game. Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, is Fulham like to me? Fulham is just a slightly better version of Luton, and like <laughs> you know, they're just sort yeah. they're just bad, but their actual players across the board in every position are instead of a four out of ten, maybe a five point five out of ten, right? With maybe right. one or two exceptions, and you know, they're. St- they don't play with a complete deep low block, but also they're really compact. I mean, their lines are tight. I mean, they're not like getting shredded not all over BLC the place. Leads. With, yeah, I mean, there's not like space all over the pitch or something, you know, and they yeah. do tactically foul pretty well generally. And I don't know, they just seem to have a way of making it so that games don't really break out. Yeah. And I'm just worried that this is going to be a similarly bad matchup on paper and also like with Spurs full at home and it's just kind of heaters you know i'm just worried about that versus yeah no i mean i like i said i need to like yeah i'm, I'm definitely gonna look into this a little bit over the break and and see if it supports me because i do feel like they're a more aggressive team full than luton but also what you're saying rings true like i feel like in the matches against the big teams they are not a more aggressive team or we're not last year at least right and if that's the case then yeah we're gonna see the same game play out um with better players, and that and that's not what you want if you're capping Sun, right? Yeah, I mean, more midfielders, um, maybe less defenders. I mean, they they can maybe be able to play through a little bit better, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's to me, it's like, is home Fulham the same as home Luton? And I'm in mean, like, maybe it is close enough 
because I'm just kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth. I realize that, right? Where earlier I'm right. like, well, I'm home loot and I'm happy. Home full, I'm like, no, but full, I'm stuck too. So. I don't know. You know, maybe it, maybe it is that, you know, that just take the easier on paper fixture, you know, city home Brighton. I mean, I don't know. You know I mean, city or have their own little stutter yeah, going on right now. We could also, we, we could go in any direction right now, but we can talk about the bad teams. We could talk about city or we could talk about Liverpool and Mo. Which one do you want to go? What do you want? What is there to talk about Liverpool and Mo? I don't know. They're good. I guess. Yeah, they're good. I mean, they're and, up, you know yeah, anyone obviously. else? Darwin, Diaz, Trent. I don't know. I guess nothing's really changed. Yeah, especially I don't with think the much early has kickoff after the break. Diaz and Darwin probably won't be back. It's a fucking disaster. You know. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Everton game is going to be really cagey and tough as they Horrible. usually are. Um, I think it's difficult today with two weeks away from the deadline because the gackening information is going to be important. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Darwin, yeah, Liverpool. Are okay i guess yeah. i mean they played they had little 10 minute period stretches of the game where it's like oh they're they're good but then they yeah. also just conceded possession a ton and their press seemed like a little bit um not very aggressive just sort of yeah. they were pressing in a way to I mean, that prevent was such it was such a weird pressing, game i thought yeah, it, it felt like they were pressing to not lose the game but not to win the ball back <laughs> like they weren't yeah. swarming yeah. but they were yeah. keeping like brighton pen back for a long time but in terms of just creating i don't know i thought darwin was very medium throughout the whole game um didn't really had that one headed headed chance i think right he, he kind of headed high but yeah broadly speaking he was sort i thought of his hold up and passing much. was really was good. good and yeah, usually you don't good. associate that stuff with him but yeah he I didn't know. really look like he was gonna score a goal yeah it was Which just is such weird a for weird him. game like i think like if people want it were get really <laughs> like desperate in the international break and you want to watch like a an interesting match i mean like rewatching this one would be super interesting i mean the amount of time that someone on either team in the back four to six players just was on the ball with no pressure was staggering yeah like they were just standing still with the ball foot on the ball just like all right what should i do here I'll yeah, just Bart, roll it to dunk. Yeah, I'll just Bart roll it to Bart seemed to have it. the ball for 30 minutes of the game. It was insane. And it, it was like, weirdly, it was like the respect that each team had for the other team. And it was also like the, I'm not falling for this shit <laughs> from both teams, yeah. right? Like, because yeah. any time either team was in space, they looked like they're about to create a huge chance, right? Like, Liverpool didn't have the ball for fucking 30 straight minutes in the first half, it felt like. As, as a... Yeah fan i was just like i if we get into half at one nil i'm happy and yeah. then the five minutes happens it's like oh we can just score every single time we're in space <laughs> like yeah. that's what it felt like it's like this team's a mess and they yeah. probably felt the same way at the end of the second half right they were just like oh wow like if march pushes up and we overlap with matoma like holy shit we can just get in whenever we want um, yeah I, I, I think when igor went off things changed yeah yeah. Much for the much worse for them. He he looked like a bright. He was bright and and you know, Trent also yeah. didn't attack at all this game. And Matoma never got the ball until Trent went off. And then when Trent went off, he was just turning Gomez for fun and getting in over and over again. It was just such a weird game. It was yeah, such that, a weird game. And Brighton seemed to very intentionally avoid that whole flank. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, they just totally. didn't play it over there. And it seemed like they were both happy to just have them neutralize each other in, in a way of neither of them doing anything, not in the way yeah. of they're both getting in behind the other nonstop, which could yeah, have happened yeah. if either manager was like, let's do this instead. Yeah. But, you know, Trent was good in, in the spells that he had to do something, which was very yeah. few. And yeah, it was a very weird game. I agree. But, you know, moving forward, I think, you know, Darwin, I'm still sitting here with him, you know, kind of nervous. Yeah. And also looking at the fixtures and being like, I've just made my bed here, you know, and I need to just hope that the things happen in these easy fixtures um, right. and he gets some starts. I mean, I don't know. I mean, ask me again after three blanks and, you know, Ollie Watkins just gets five points or more every game and we'll see how yeah. I'm doing there. But, I don't know about Trent still. I mean, at 7-9, yeah. you know, the fixtures do get easier from the clean sheets perspective, but the way this team plays with, you know, three, you know, very 
non-defensive midfielders, yeah, you know? I mean, it's nothing just remotely like, close to a defensive yeah, midfielder. It's just like they give up big chances all the time. I don't know if eight million is is a good investment there. It's just Yeah, I mean the my my opinion is that I think the defense is actually good and kind of recovered from last season's insane dip, but you can't get him in your team without getting rid of Holland, which, you know, people are asking about and maybe people will start getting rid of him or Mo or Son or something like that. I, it just doesn't exist. And then we talked about it last pod, right? It's just trips can fucking concede two goals, get an assist and he gets two bonus. And he's a million and a half, a half less. It's just ridiculous. So, yeah, yeah I and, mean, like, three and that weeks is ago, I was like, I'm gonna want Trent, and I do want Trent, but at the sacrifices that you have to make in your team, no, the not. amount of hits you have to take to get him, yeah. just doesn't seem feasible at all. He's also off a lot of set pieces, Trent. Yeah, Sobo's been and, taking and Robo. I mean, you see, look, that's why Trips gets an assist in a 2-2 game, because he takes every set piece, so every single time he fucking yep. bonks a little floaty ball over there and nothing happens, yep. it just pads all that shit. And when Trent doesn't have that, it makes it, makes it harder yep. for him to be the bonus point magnet like we've been used to in the past. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that. You know, I, I agree. The defense is is better. Also, you know, Fabinho did a lot of shit. You know, and they yep. kept 20 cleans. You know, I don't. This is they they're good. They're not keeping 20 cleans. You know, I mean, to me, like this defense. You know, if they have these defenders healthy, maybe it's in the 15, 12, 15 region, which is still fantastic. Um, and eight million, dude. It's just so much. You know, it's just it's so, so expensive. Much. It's so hard to to make the team with him. I know. I, you know, I having Mo desperately Holland, you know? want him, but yeah. in the pecking order, you just can't put him ahead of trips who, you know, Newcastle plays so defensive. He's on every set piece. Yada, yada, yada. We know all the shit and he's just so much cheaper. I mean, it's just yeah. the price is just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember we talked about this when the prices came out. It was just like, right. Like everyone other than Mo and Holland, everyone is like a million to a million and a half cheaper than we thought they'd be except Trent. Yeah, it was like every all these Arsenal mids, United mids, all these fucking defenders, blah blah blah, and then Trent's just eight, and it was just like, what is this? <laughs> like he's yeah. so much more expensive than everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Holland out though is getting a little bit of steam. Um, I think you it's know, just said, it's so Psych- insane to me. <laughs> I've seen some wild card teams, and I'm just like, this is the best team I've ever seen. And then I'm like, oh, you're missing Holland. <laughs> that that's what's happening, but. Psychov said, are we being held hostage by Holland's EO? Uh, Side said, what do you make of Alvarez and City with some slightly tougher fixtures ahead? Ryan said, do we transfer out Holland until Kev returns, which is fucking next year, so I don't know what that means. feel like that final ball isn't finding its way through to him as it was last season with Gundo and Kev on the pitch. feels like Watkins is a better investment he actually gets on the ball. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Watkins better than Holland. You heard it here first. I mean, I but, don't know where these bad fixtures are. I, I'm looking at them right now. I don't understand how anyone reads this and says these are bad. Well, I do because he can't get a fucking shot. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't even come close to the ball against Arsenal. You know, the the Forest game. Forget about it. There was a red card. You know, at, at halftime, and they just decided to not play. But Wolves and Arsenal. He I mean, he has. He, I know. I'm saying like that game was fine. It looks bad, and if you look at the stats, but that's because they were down to ten yeah, in yeah. the second half. But Wolves and Arsenal. I mean, he's one combined shot in two games. City create nothing in two games. It's just like a little bit dippy. But I'm personally holding him, and it sounds like you are too. Yeah, it's just, it just to me doesn't make any sense. Again, we've been talking about this more like since last year. Just don't captain him. You know, I mean, you're not, you're exposing yourself in a way of, you know, City could look bad for a game or two and then score five the next game. And we have no idea when that's going to happen. We have no idea when Pep's going to change the instructions to like stop trying to one nil and just go do all the things. You know, we don't, there's just, they change so many times within a season. Yeah. You can't oh. even keep track. You know, it's just oh. so mind blowing to figure out, you know, what he's trying to do and when and why. You know, it's not possible. All I know is this is the best team in the league, and the only bad fixtures they have really are against Arsenal and kind of maybe Liverpool sometimes. And maybe. that's it. 
And well, Spurs. They lose to Spurs every year. Yeah, they lose to Spurs for fun. That's true. Forgot about that one. <laughs> I just, it just don't, just don't captain him. You know, what I mean, just don't yeah. captain him. You know, and I, I think that you're just gonna be doing fine there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm to- I'm totally with you. I, I get it. You know, like I understand you're going for it. You're going on wild card. You love your team. Like it's almost like you get that like fucking in your head of that team that you can make without him. And it's just hard to like sleep at night because you're just like, man, I want all these guys that yeah. I, now I can't get if I put him back in and feel so bad. But yeah, I mean, best team every year since, you know, since Pep's first year in the Prem best manager of the last fucking before we started watching football, right? Best manager of the generation. I think they're going to figure it out. (laughs) Like, I don't think that two bad attacking games is enough for me to just be like, city are fucking done. Home Brighton, good attacking fixture. At Man United, good attacking fixture. Home Bournemouth, unbelievable attacking fixture. Yeah. What what are we doing? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. And we still, again, you know, this is beating a dead horse, but I think it, it is worth saying out loud again. He is a flat track bully. You know, that is what he has been since he arrived. And you look at his game log, and the West Ham game is a little bit up and mixed to inter to to interpret because he did score one goal, could have had a hat trick in that. He could game. have had nine. <laughs> but you know, he's getting his returns against bad teams, and he's not getting returns against good teams. You know, blanked against. Newcastle blanked against Arsenal, blank at Wolves, which was a very odd one at, at Molyneux. But brought, and then he returned in every other game against bad teams, you know. And that's who he is. And he, that doesn't mean he's in a blank every game against bad teams or you know the the sixth to tenth place team. Yeah, it, you, he could still get a return or a double return in any of those games. It just you know you just you, know, you just don't you don't have to captain him. But I think you're just yeah. exposing yourself so much. By not owning him, it's just not worth it. It's not. I think the clever play is again not captaining him. If this is how you feel, just don't yeah. captain him. Yeah, and that's that's that. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's hard to predict, right? Away matches also are way tougher, right? I mean, yeah. there's a reason that Mourinho's blueprint was draw at home. I uh, sorry, draw away, win at home. I mean, even last city, city barely won their home their away games against the top teams, and they won the fucking trouble. And they're like yeah. one of the best teams ever, yeah. you know. And they, if you look, even at the the teams he's about to play, Manchester United and Brighton, away Brighton they drew one one Holland blanked, away Manchester United they lost two one Holland blanked, home Brighton he braced, home and United he hat tricked and two assists, he, qu- yeah. he quintuple returned. Yeah, we just gotta relax. Away Arsenal, you know, no one played in that game. There was yeah. actually no football occurring in North London at that time. So how could how could a football player score if there was no football match? Can't. Yeah, big brain, five head, brain, whatever. <laughs> Ten head. Yeah, um, but it's it's clear to me. I mean, it's, you know, home Bournemouth, auto cap, game week 11, you know, at Man United. Ridiculous. No, that's a mo cap. Brighton this week, questionable cap. Maybe I think cap. Neck, neck and neck with sun cap. And then at Chelsea, don't cap. Home Liverpool don't cap, and then we'll see at home Spurs what we feel and think about at that point. Yeah, right, right, right. It's just, you know, and, and you, yeah, yeah. And I don't, and I just don't subscribe. Like, well, if you're only captaining him once, you know, in the next four game weeks, and why own him? Because that doesn't mean he's not going to score points in the games you don't captain him. You know, he could very well score points in those games, and you know, that's an issue for you. So. Right, and I thought that this was the lesson that a lot of us learned with Kane last season. And that's part of the reason why I started with Mo this season, right? Right. You don't have to captain these guys every week for them to be good. Points are yeah. really good. Yeah. And Alvarez, I think, is still also just a steady hold. Steady, easy hold. Yeah. Easy Not hold. Not even, no reason to even consider removing him whatsoever for me. No. Rodri will be back. Yeah, you know Jack's back. Yeah, you know, they're they're gonna be fucking fine, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wolves. I, I don't know. You mentioned that the weirdness of that Wolves game, and I agree, it was weird. And they've kind of like played to the level of the competition every game this season, almost. But fucking Hwanger and Neto 
just keep hauling points. And, and Jitterbugs said are Huang and Neto real. They have decent attacking fixtures coming up. Fossey said talk wolves to me. Is Huang an enabler pick? Two of the next three look good. And Huang somehow is on five goals in 400 minutes. He like doesn't even start half the games. But Neto just seems like actually we were a year early on Neto. He wasn't fully recovered from his injury and he's now the player that we thought he was, basically. Yeah, I'm still just not in love with how he gets his points, you know. And you mean like you dribbling know. sixty yards and beating three guys every game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he and and having to pass and rely on you know Huang, He Chan to continue scoring goals. Like I don't you know, or whatever or own goal assists kind of shit. You know, I mean, he's yeah. not really getting any bonus points. He doesn't shoot very much, and he's playing wing for a really bad team. You know, he's five seven, so what are you expecting? You know, yeah, this right. is as good as it gets. Four five seven. My issue is again, as we've been touching on with him, and I just want to vacate the bracket entirely. And if I am gonna go cheap on a spot, you know, I think Cole JWP. Palmer definitely threw his hat into the ring after, you know, slotting a pen and looking good the last couple of games. I know their fixtures are getting tougher and I think suit check is worth talking about, honestly. I, know. I mean, watching them more Closely lately, since deal? I have three of their players all of a sudden. Yeah, you're like he's a just, fucking hammer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just doing a lot of striking, and he's doing very little defending. You know, I mean, he's just, he's just playing in the role that he played in when he scored every goal, every game a few years every ago game. when he came. Like, he's just not having to sit anymore. I mean, Rice was allowed in you know, the last couple of seasons to kind of do those forays. Edson doesn't do shit. I mean, he was fucking horrible in the Newcastle game, but he doesn't <laughs> that go might anywhere. be a problem for a soup. Yeah, for a double defense. Forwards. whatever but i mean suchek is just like free you know he just kind of had a free role and he was marauding all over the place and he's four nine so you know i i think going down even there is like okay worth it to me you know but look at look at this fucking shot map yeah i mean come on what the I fuck mean, what, is that <laughs> he's, that's what i'm telling you dude he's fucking playing striker again and they're not even all headers anymore they're, they're open, just, play. Like, open play I, like, t- I, that's what i'm saying sitters. dude that's what i'm saying i like that's uh, the pick like he's the pick i want or 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 palmer you know with pens if i, mean, I don't I still think, think jwp pens, is better but, than Neto too i still think he's just gonna steady yeah. tick he's like I agree. Not point, that much more expensive, point right? Five. I mean, point five is not nothing. It's not uh, nothing, yeah. but like if you're talking about, I assume people who are getting Neto are using him as an enabler to get someone else expensive, right? Whether that's Trips or Mo or Sun or whatever, right? And so therefore, you're probably relying on this player to start every game. Give me JWP. Like JWP, I can. You could just get him and you're like, I have him for the next 20 game weeks. I have him till my second wild card and you're fine. I think you're yeah. totally fine. Neto can just blank for five games in a row. And that would be really unsurprising. And you yeah. just be like, well, you got a wolves winger. Yeah. What'd you expect? You know, yeah. yeah for the best is, could be behind him. And we're just, we could just be wrong for a long totally. time. We, we both love the player. I mean, I started love with him. him last, I started with him last year and that obviously famously went very poorly for me, but <laughs> and everyone. yeah, yeah, everyone else who joined me in that, but you know, yeah, they have Bournemouth and Sheffield United two of the next three, you know, they have Fulham coming up. They have, you know, all, a lot of road games. Which, Every you know, other game is, is a fucking banger, actually. They yeah. have Bournemouth and Newcastle, they have Sheffield and Spurs, they have Fulham, then Arsenal, they have Burnley, NFO. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's <sighs> fine. He's a fine pick. I, I agree. I would prefer to have JWP. If you can't get JWP, you know, I, again, I would go down looking, you know, see what I could get with another million going to Palmer or... Or Suchek maybe, but yeah, Neto is just just fine. You know, he's just fine. Yeah, the the thing, the thing, I'm kind of like doubling back a little bit on my takes because I do think that the schedule this season matters more than I can remember it mattering any other season. Meaning, Sheffield United are one of the worst teams I think we've ever seen. And statistically, they definitely are. That's a fact. But like, also performances and players. They're like you can like captain anyone against them. They just lose three 0 every game. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter who the opponent is. Doesn't matter. What, what about happens. it when it's City? What are they playing Sheffield soon? They barely beat them. It was one one going in a stoppage. Uh, Remember oh, that yeah. game? 
Are you yeah, kidding awesome. me? That was awful. He missed the pen or something. Yeah, that the one that I mean that yeah. exactly that. That's what yeah, it yeah, takes yeah. is like missing sitters <laughs> and pens is like yeah. the only way they're in the game and own goals. That's the only yeah, way yeah. they've been in any game. But where are but you like, just saying this because Wolves are playing them soon, or where well, are you yeah, I'm, from just, I'm saying this in in the sense of like also Luton are bad, Burnley are just as bad, Bournemouth have been just as bad. Wolves and drew like, Burnley one one. What? Wolves drew against Blue in 1 1. Yeah, it's not ideal, but you know I mean, what? Wolves are bad. <laughs> wolves are bad. No, I know, also, but, yeah. but also Neto scored and got Max Bonds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right, so, For like, sure. what I'm saying is, like, I think that, like, the strength of schedule should be factored in maybe a little bit more this season than we have in the past. That's and fair. the fact that the fact that Wolves have Bournemouth, Sheffield, Fulham, Burnley, all very, you know, in every other game, maybe that yeah. should matter more than like it has in the past. Like maybe those games are just so ridiculously good, you know, that it should matter more. Is there well, something I'm I'm playing with in my head? Yeah. Well, then you're, you know, then I'm back to wanting to rotate the player, you know, and not have yeah. to start him again, you know, because okay, those are good fixtures, but are you going to be holding from nine to sixteen to get those few plum fixtures when he has yeah. Newcastle, Spurs, Arsenal? Like that's to me, problem. it's just that's not good, you know. That yeah, maybe it can not... rotate with a four-five defender yeah. or something weird like that. I mean, that. it's it's you know he's. I mean, when I watch that, I mean, I see a lot of like Mitoma with him, you know. You just have to remember, you know, these are wingers, you know, they're fucking wingers. They play far over on the side of the pitch for the vast, vast majority of the game. Yeah. And we, yeah. you know, yes, we've seen Matoma have some inside runs where he's getting some chances in and around the, the penalty spot. But, yeah. you know, Neto's shots are bad from far away. He takes you down to the byline, you know, yes. So he's getting some assistant goal, goal opportunities with his low, flat, very fast, hard crossing. But... Those are just picks that I do get worried about. Yeah. Generally. Yeah, I, th so. I think that's fair. I mean, yeah, thus far as numbers are good, we'll see. We'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did want to get that scheduled point out there, I think, because no, it, it, it's, it's hard to wrap yeah. the head around, right? It's like the, a perfect example, I think, is this week Manchester United, right? Like, I obviously sold Bruno. Manchester United are obviously playing terribly. They look bad. The vibes are bad. The, you know, the injuries, yada, yada, yada. They're at Sheffield this week. I mean, I expect them to score three. Like, if you were one of those types of teams that just has Rashford for some reason, you've had, like, other fires to put out, like, I'm, I'm not selling him. And it's the exact same with me keeping Raz, right? And Raz has looked good, so maybe it's not a like-for-like, like, but, like, Chelsea have been a disaster in uh, four games straight or something before Burnley. And they play Burnley, and they just score four. And it's just like, Nico, if Nico Jackson scores... You know, it's just like ridiculous game against a, you know, opponents that just aren't at this level. You know, so yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Hold your uh, hold your I Man mean, United assets for one more yeah, week and then transfer. I'm not sure. I mean, it's that's a tough one for me to to stomach because, you know, we said the same thing before Burnley. You know, barely score a goal. I mean, yeah, Rashford's yeah. blank four games in a row. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, that, that. I mean, yeah, Bruno's uh, obviously better than Rashford, but. Yeah. Yeah, they're, again, they're all bad. And Bruno's they're, defense, they're, none of them are good. Terrible game, you know, 10 pointer against Burnley. Scores yeah. the winner, scores a yeah, wall. Yeah. yeah, he scored the one shot, and that was great for him. But, you know, broadly speaking, yes, it's going to be difficult to sell anyone ahead of Sheffield United, no matter how bad yeah. you look. Yeah. He's, you know, read Man United. But, yeah. You know, two weeks is a long time, so we'll have to see, you know, the kind of state of affairs as the, as the deadline approaches. But, yeah, I think it's like you're talking about with the schedule, it's just. I think it makes it that much more important to to not generalize and not look at, oh, well, this guy has this many points so far, therefore, you know, when you're yeah, looking at, right. you have to look at where did they get their points? Who are they playing? Right. You know, what am I doing here? Because, yeah, I think there's a lot of, you know, noisy data return because Luton, Sheffield, I mean, Burnley, these teams that are just incapable and incompetent are so bad that doesn't mean that the guy that hauls against them is a good pick or a good player. Exactly. And you, and got, Raz, you have to separate Raz, the two. Raz. Raz. <laughs> Chelsea have had the easiest schedule in the league. They've played Luton, NFO, Bournemouth, Fulham, Burnley, all fucking nightmares. He 19-pointer triple returns against Luton, blanks against Forrest, blanks against Bournemouth. 
has the shits against Fulham and 16 point or triple returns against Burnley. Like, probably not a good pick. Like, he should probably leave your team as the fixtures get really hard. But, like, he is proving that going by fixtures is useful because he had two hauls in that stretch. Yeah. Agreed. Mm, interesting. Agreed. Yep. Um, guys said we're nearing a quarter of the season done. Are there some, is that true? I don't know. I guess we're kind of close. Yeah. He said nearing a quarter of the season done. Are there some strong priors we need to reassess? Big macro question there. Yeah. I think we've been continually doing that. I think we've been doing a pretty good job of that. I mean, we've, we've touched on, you know, our, our changing of, of views of Man United ad nauseum. I think Arsenal, maybe we don't spend as much time talking yeah. about. Um, but yeah, you know that this is a team that's hasn't lost a game, you know. Yeah, have fairly underpriced assets for FPL, yeah. and yet none of them feel great. If yeah. I don't know, they're they're in some very bizarre world right now. Yeah. I mean, they've been having some injuries seemingly every week. Someone new gets injured. Um, the lack of consistency in the team maybe is something that's that's difficult to catch up with, but Arsenal almost require you know a bi monthly you know reassessment yeah, know. of I like know. what what's their schedule for the next two weeks like is there Europe is there not who's fit who's available and and go from there. Um, what else are you seeing? Anything else? No, I like that one a lot. And Arsenal remind I just want to remind people they have a scenic run starting in game week ten. So, like, I'm definitely looking at them, right? They mixed in there. They have an at Newcastle, at Brentham, not great, but uh, aforementioned. At Brentham is great. Stop. You have eh. to stop with this. It's not. It's not. They're bad. It's, they're mid table, and that's not a great picture. It just never has been for anyone it's except an o- Scott it's McTominay. Okay. It's okay. It's not something that you look at and you're like, wow, I need to get their players. But they have home Sheffield, home Burnley, home Wolves at Luton. Yeah. That's something where I'm like, I need Sokka, you know, assuming he's fit by gimmick 10. Martinelli is on the radar. You know, Jesus is on the radar. I think defenders are very on the radar, right? Like Zinchenko is playing, looking back to his old self. And White is actually attacking, you know, like getting Max Bones and shit like that. Even in games when he doesn't return against Man City. It, Ars- Arsenal's time is going to come soon. And then hopefully, you know, that. The good fixtures bring some more consistency. Yeah. And Rai is in, which, you know, love that from love a, that. everything perspective. I mean, Gabrielle's 4 7. I mean, I think you don't yeah. look further than, yeah. than that if you want an Arsenal defender. He's, he's very much totally. back in the first team after the whole saga that was going on preseason and shit. And he played but, great. Yeah. Him and Saliba were both great. Yeah. They're doing, they're back to doing whatever. And, um, I agree. Yeah, I think having a defender is a nice, nice option coming up. And Saka, Odegaard, Jesus, yeah. you know, they're all going to be yeah. Martinelli Odegaard probably. Too. Yeah, yeah, they're all probably going to be picks again soon. So, yeah, we'll see after this after this Chelsea game. You know, and they have home Sheffield United very brightly right there. You know, we'll have to see and, and do kind of a, a a gut check to see what we're doing there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anyone else reassessing? I mean. Not that much, I don't think. Uh, I think Villa have been interesting. You know, West Ham definitely. We've been a lot more glowing on them compared to last year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, which, which you know, going into the season, it was difficult to to tell because they didn't do all their business till really late. So yeah, yeah, um, Kudus, you know, they, JWP. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think they're a big surprise. Um, I'm trying to just think of other things that haven't borne out. Based on what we kind of were talking about, you well, know, Chelsea game week obviously one or there have been around. very disappointing, and now they have a tough run. So, like, no one should be yeah. anywhere near their picks. Yeah, um, Colwell's probably just going to be like second or third on my bench for two months now. Um, yeah, I mean, Brentham, you know, tongue in cheekily, right? As I'm saying, they're bad, but they are bad. You know, they're much lower than anyone really thought they should or would be at this point in the season. Sure, you know, Tony, blah, blah, blah. But everyone's like, oh, they buy well. There's a good manager. They know what they're doing. I mean, they just, they've won one game. They've won yeah. literally one game this year. It's it is shocking. funny with the, the Tony thing. And they haven't thing. had a hard fixture run. Yeah, but the Tony thing, it's like, 
I can't really think of another example. I'm sure Bill Simmons has some term for whatever this is. It's, it's not Ewing theory, but it's some other, it's like the opposite of Ewing theory. But, you know, after those first three, four ish games, it was just like Tony who, right? Like that was the narrative, right? It was just like Wiss is scoring, Boomo scoring every game. Like they're, you know, they haven't lost yet. Like they look good, blah, blah, blah. But man, they would do anything for Tony in the last four games. Like nothing they need more than their best player. And it yeah, just, he's their best player. It catches no up question. to you. You know, it's, it's yeah. the type of thing that catches up to you. Right. Um, yeah. And you know, honestly, they haven't bought well, <laughs> you know, they bought really badly. KLP looks like that was maybe just, they lit money on fire. Um, Shada looks like, okay, well, he's fine. I, I mean, was going to say, I actually good? think Shada was kind of having like a breakout. I think he was actually looking incredible. And then I mean, what's yeah, he, and then I mean, he, he played fucking like, out for the season. Like, yeah, you know. I mean, he played three games. I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, the injury. Sure. He looked amazing. You know, maybe though. there's something going. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's probably, he's and then, you know, the maybe Rico injury there. really hurt. That really yeah. hurt them. Yeah. They're starting a, fucking Rorslev and Hickey at wing backs. Yeah. It's just like not the same. Well, yeah. I mean, they, their depth is being tested and it's bad. And, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, Dam's guard. Well, also isn't, the keeper isn't done anything. Yeah, the keeper, the Fleckening looks completely. Ryan Flecken yeah. is historic. I mean, Strakosha was better than Fleck. That was a better goalkeeping performance than I've seen from Flecken terrible. all year. Flecken, terrible. <laughs> I know, these I'm are, just saying, like, they're both terrible. I'm not trying to yeah. say one's better than the other. I mean, like, they're just like. Shakosh was just parrying everything away yeah. like, into the box. Like he's just like he he got oh worse as the game progressed. But <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, you know they're yeah they're just I think that but that again right I think we have to reassess this. Like yes, first four games unbeat like one you know unbeaten last four games you know a draw and three beaten. losses beaten you know beaten badly <laughs> first four games unbeaten and last again four games, you know. Their fixtures have been really easy. You know, they've played Spurs, Fulham, Palace, Bournemouth, Newcastle, Everton, NFO, Man United. I think it's basically middling ish, right? They had the home Spurs at Newcastle and Man United are, you know, the harder side. And then they had five winnable ones. So, yeah, a slightly easier than normal, but. Haven't played Liverpool, haven't played Arsenal, haven't played City. You know, I mean, yeah. It, yeah, so I mean they're they're in for a longer season, I but, think. But than... they also haven't played any of the promoted sides. Sure, sure. So that but goes the, hand the, in hand, you know. But they set. don't. They play Burnley this week. I'm holding Bumo. That, but they don't play Luton until 14. They don't play Sheffield until 16. They blank in 18. Who? The, I don't even fucking remember that happening. They yeah. have a blank in 18. But I mean, it, to me, it's you. You definitely don't want to have Bumo game week 10. I mean that's oh, yeah, Chelsea, yeah. Western, Liverpool, yeah. Arsenal. You know, you just hope you hope that Burnley do Burnley the Burnley has been and they very, score for you. Very nice to me. So I'm yeah. gonna hold for Burnley and then yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah, and that you know is also that no reassessment there. I mean, we were we were on that preseason that they are gonna get heavily beaten the most from the yeah. promoted sides, and that's been true so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think you know. So I think we've kind of been maybe like a fit, little half and half on our hits and misses on yeah some stuff here. And it's still but, really early. Yeah. yeah. Um, Side said, "What are your top three defenses for the next five or so, given form and fixtures?" So I mean, just who who are you bringing in? I guess is basically what he's asking. Defenders. Yeah. I mean, I think <clears throat> the most difficult one to read here is Villa because. They're, they certainly have the fixtures. You know, I mean, home West Ham isn't great, but then they have Luton, NFO, Fulham, Spurs, also not great, but then Bournemouth. So they have four really good yeah, so cleanable they're on fixtures. The list. That's they're for sure. They're on the list. You know, they have four really good cleanable fixtures in the next six. And also, they look like they can't keep a clean sheet against, you know, a team from France. I don't even know what they do. <laughs> so that's one you need to check, you know, check in deep deep within yourself. Um, West Ham also definitely in this conversation, you know, they got the Newcastle game out of the way, which we haven't talked about. I, I guess I don't maybe won't really want to, but then they have Villa, Everton, <laughs> Brentham, NFO, Burnley, Palace, Spurs, Fulham, Wolves, Man United home. So, I mean, they have a pretty long, good run. So I think they're a team that you, that you consider and, and Arsenal, you mentioned, right? The crit. Yeah. Arsenal are very, very high. I mean, less higher than yeah. either of those two. The, the weird thing about West Ham and Villa so far is, and West Ham, have conceded the third most non-penalty actually in the league. 
The only teams worse than them are Bournemouth and Sheffield so far. And Villa are like 14th. The only teams are all the promote, all the bad teams that we literally just mentioned. They're right next to Brighton, and you know, like fourteenth, the fifteenth, or something yeah. like that. So fixtures like, need to st- be considered there, though. We've yeah, talked statistically, about this. it's been kind of bad, but yeah, I think the thing with Villa that we've seen is like they got fucking railed in a few games where they were just overmatched. Um, so you're hoping that in a similar way to Newcastle before their run, good run, right, where they've been keeping cleans regularly. You're hoping that the good fixtures they can tighten up and just like have more control and not can see big chances. West Ham, I, I don't know what to do with them. I, I they're like good ish and they have some good players and attackers, but like I don't know. I just, I just don't see many cleans in this team. Yeah, I, they they remind me a lot of the Wolves of yesteryear, the Nuno team when they would just concede one. You know I mean, it's just like, God damn it, you know? The one thing they do have going for them, Ariel is incredible. So yeah, I like him. they do have that going for them. But yeah, I mean, they, they just have these moments each game where it's just like, yeah, they're just all over, the, all over the show, you know, where they have these sequences where you just look at them and you're like, what are they doing? Yeah. You know, and, and that is certainly problematic. Um, but, you know, the, the fixtures are good and they do have a good 11, you know? Yep. So I, I still just feel like, you know, we need to give them this little period to know what they are because, yeah. you know, no, they haven't cleaned very much, but they, and they gave up a goal against Luton, which makes their overall look a lot worse. That was their, <laughs> yeah. that was Luton's first yeah. game at home too, which was very unlucky for them to have faced them in that moment. But their fixtures due to were insane. They've played Newcastle, Liverpool, City. You have to saying. say that though. It's no. been Newcastle, Liverpool, City, Brighton, Chelsea, like... They play the top, you know, they play like really yeah. tough top attacks. So, yeah, I mean, like Opta or whatever the fuck this is says they've they've had the fifth hardest schedule so far in yeah. the season, which is, you know, pretty fucking hard. Yeah. Um, but that said, I, I would just rather have the teams that are putting up the good numbers, the better teams who have not as good fixtures, but still have good fixtures, right? I would yeah. rather have Arsenal, I would rather have Newcastle because I'm yeah. just like, they're better. I have more faith in them keeping cleans, et cetera. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, it's I'm like those you. four, right? I mean, there's unfortunately for Kanate, he's just obviously not nailed. Matip is starting all the games because yeah. there's a four nine starter for Liverpool. We just don't know who it is because they would also be on this list for you know the short term fixtures, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably about it. I don't think you have that's to look further it. than that. Yeah, yeah I haven't. I haven't thought about another defender, really. Yeah. Um, speaking of Fleck, Pick said, a bit more serious question. What do we do with the Fleckening disaster? Fleckening disaster? Maybe. Well, what? He, he had a virus? I don't know. They said he's out for a month. Maybe he got like a fucking... A month? He's out for a month with illness, undisclosed illness. I mean, maybe I thought he, he was just fucking... Like... <laughs> I don't know. He got something... Gnarly, he maybe it's like malaria, bacterial infection, or some has, shit. Maybe he has mono. He's out for a week or a month or oh something. God, I don't, I don't know what's up with him, but yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you obviously get rid of him, you know, assuming you don't have a goalkeeper, play, you know. But that also hasn't. I haven't seen very many teams with Flecken in a non-player. I mean, yeah, everyone, everyone has Turner, Turner or, every, yeah. or Areola, right? Yeah. So, is that worth a transfer? You know, I don't. I probably don't know. It depends not. on the rest of your team. Yeah, probably not. I mean, Turner. Luton coming up home, <laughs> then it gets bad, you know, and you're Easy. not really expecting a clean from them ever, you know. This, yeah. Look, NFO is a team that's going to keep seven cleans, like, at the most this year, probably. Something yeah. in that region. They're going to be D's bottom been for the okay. non. okay. And yeah. at the same time, there's so many mistakes in the team. Yeah. I mean, outside of the three promoted teams, I mean, I would expect NFO to be last in clean sheets of the rest of the teams. Um you know, you don't want to be there. That said, you know, do you want to, does that mean you're going to have to like hold Rashford in a bad run or instead of getting a forward who could get 15 points or hold Bumo in right. a bad run instead of getting a midfielder who can, I'm sorry, midfielder in Rashford's case, like instead of getting a midfielder to score 50 points, you know, that that's down to the squad, but yeah. Yeah. So far this season, he's been by a very large margin, worst keeper in the league in terms of like shots I mean, goals Not conceded versus XG, like the post blah, blah, shot blah. XG. Yeah. yeah, he's terrible. Like not even remotely close. Mm. Bad, bad how for about, him. 
How about all those fuckford holders finally getting their points? Wow, they're so the funniest so thing is that for them most all. of the Pickford holders wild carded this week. Good and got, got them out of their team. Get absolutely fucked. That's awesome. I love, love it. it. Great pick. Love that. Great player. Yep. Great pick. Yep. Uh, yeah, Harley Boys asked about initial captain this week, so we kind of discussed that already. We'll obviously yeah. be back in you know ten days for Patreon Friday My Life episode. We'll talk yeah. about it a lot more then. Um, bouncy is good. Yeah, the oh, one thing ahead. on that too that I mean, the seventy-five minute thing from Sun is a big, big T capital T tilt. You know, I mean, it, it seems to literally not matter what's going on in the game. It's like he just you can only play seventy-five minutes every yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. It's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. It's really, no really to, bad. No other way to say yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's so, it's, it's really bad. Does that yeah, make I mean, Maddo? Like, is that stupid? Well, Maddo also got subbed off, but he, he obviously has more minutes in him, yeah. but like barely, Seems right? Like how good. many more nineties has Maddo played? Like one? I mean, he just flogs Kulu and then he subs everyone yeah, Kulu else. Kulu is just like. <laughs> gets no <laughs> points, gets every minute. That's all yeah. he does this year. Yeah. Fitness monster, cool. Yeah. And I would have thought, you know, he's someone that needs to be heavily managed because, like, he seems to always get injured, but not well, this also year. Also, based know. on how slowly he runs, I thought, like, he this guy must never be fit, but I guess he's fit. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I wish, like, I mean, it's not hard math to do, but, like, you know, people like myself always look at per 90. You know, FDRF rightly shows per 90, but Sun really, his numbers need to be adjusted to per 70. Yeah. And yeah. he's not, I don't care, he's putting up half an XG per 90. He doesn't play a 90. Yeah. It's probably more like a third of an XG in reality. Or per game. Per Never start called, or something. Per game. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah Balthus said, Diaby, no international football. Does that make him the better 7 million mid? Do I do Foden to Diaby? Well, it's a, yeah, I, did you watch this game? No. I didn't watch this game either. Um, I did see that he did absolutely nothing and got subbed on 60. And yeah. he didn't like create a chance, didn't have a shot, but he might have just not been fit. I don't really know. He, I don't see you buying him. I think if you have him, you're stuck. Before, West Ham's not a good fixture. I mean, West Ham, that game, Kuno, mm, can, you could tell be. me anything. That game could be a low draw score. You know, I mean, that could, West Ham's a good team. You know, you know there's for, that's for sure. Yeah, they're a decent team. They can't really that's defend. Not, Again, you know, I, I think that that's unfair to say because, you know, they've played the best teams in the league so far. And I don't class Villa in that cape category, especially away. Villa away is much different than Villa at home. Yeah. So I don't, I just don't think, you know, oh, wait, no, Villa, they do have them at home. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing it backwards. I just don't see West Ham as like, oh, I want to get them for this fixture. You know, Luton, yeah, sure. No, you're buying them for the long haul. But like, you know, a lot of people have Raz, like me, you know, and he'll be on my, he'll be in my mind, right? Like, because you're not getting him for one game week. You, you know, it's like, I'm not like getting him to captain him against West Ham yeah. or something. I'm getting him for the run. But, you know, I mean, West Ham, I agree. I, I mean, obviously they got fucking destroyed by City and Liverpool and that will sway the numbers a lot against them. But, you know, they concede a goal and XG and everything to Bournemouth, Luton, Sheffield. I mean, the yeah. Sheffield, they kept it clean. They still concede 16 shots and over an XG to the worst fucking team maybe in the last okay. 10 years. Yeah. You know, so... Don't know. I, 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 I mean, I expect Villa to score. Yeah, I still put him below Bowen. I would also just not sell Foden. I would still just hold Foden. Um yeah. I just wouldn't. Yeah, that's almost a different make, part of the question. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. make that move at all right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, starting game week ten, the Villa run is just oh my god, right? Because there's they've been so good against bad teams. Yeah. They score so many goals. They have home Luton at NFO, home Fulham at Spurs at Bournemouth. I mean, you confidently are starting like Ali and Diaby in all of those games and Cash. Yeah. Uh, Graham Burler said, "Is trips essential yet?" Our favorite word, essential. It is getting very aggravating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, he should be in every team, if that's what the question is, you know? He should be in every team. Yeah, I mean, he just gets points so regularly, and it's difficult to get regular points in defense. So, yeah. you know, 
who are you sacrificing? You know, it's probably worth it to get him in. You know, you, yeah. you just pick your least favorite guy or whatever and, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're at that point, honestly, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, I need a... And it's, it's also the vibes. It's like, what everything's just going right for Newcastle also. I mean, not getting a red card in the 15th minute when you should. <laughs> you know, I mean, beating funny. Paris, he's getting... They concede early, it doesn't matter. He still gets bonus points and, and an assist. They concede late, you know I mean? He's still getting points. They're also he's, just good. I think, you know, yeah, back good. to the Priors question... Me and you and a lot of people were like, ah, I don't know. Like, are they going to be this? They're just good. You know, yeah, like good. whether they're as they're good. good as last year or slightly Doesn't worse matter. or slightly better, they're, whatever. They're just good. They're good. They're a good team. They're they're keeping cleans in the games they should. They're beating the teams that they should. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, and the thing that you like, too, about trips is, you know, when they have tough fixtures, these aren't up and down affairs. I mean, they're just like fouls, fucking bullshit like all yeah. this dumb shit they they try to prevent the game from happening and that you know you like that you know because then you do still have the, the outside chance of you know maybe it's only like a 20 25 percent or in the good against the top six yeah. you know that's what you like to see you know from your from your defenders too so like home arsenal they can clean that easily I, that wouldn't yeah. be surprising at all to me yeah you know so yeah it does There's no game that it would be surprising really honestly yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does feel like, you know, it, it makes sense to just pick an attack or sacrifice him and just put trips in, you know, and just stop trying to faff about without him. You know, stop yeah. faffing, everyone. It seems like big, big faff energy, honestly. Yeah, it's big faff energy. Yeah, I really yeah. want him. I just, it's fucking just hard to home get him. Home Palace? Oh my God. It's so hard to get him. <laughs> He, home palace, he could have <laughs> triple digit crosses in that game. Holy shit, dude. Home palace, insanely good. Yeah. yeah. Anything else we should talk about? I mean, it's an international break. So a lot of this, you know, I don't know. We're going no, to have to change our tune on Thursday. Oh, this guy's hurt. This guy's hurt. This guy's getting back at 5 a.m. on Thursday. Yeah. He's not going to play, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, I think we're good. I mean, yeah, you know, we're just chilling for the next couple of weeks and waiting to see who comes back and in what kind of condition, if right. at all. If at all. See Maybe if Anthony never has some new, you know, rape allegations from other continents. We you never know what could happen. He, in yeah, the he's break. he's racking them up. He's racking them up, baby. I can't believe he's just on the pitch. I don't I understand how, how A leads to B. He's employed Manchester United actively trying to get Mason Greenwood back on the pitch. I mean, what this team True. This team has literally no moral compass. It's, they don't have one. It's not in the building. It doesn't exist. Yeah, it's kind of weird in hindsight that they got rid of Ronaldo. And Ten Hag probably has his poster in his room. It's like, what a legend. It's, I, was at, I, I was fucking walking to, on Saturday like to this, this little farmer's market. It was next to like a kid's. Move closer, so, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, sorry, there's like ASO like ASO games going on. Oh, okay. And I yeah. just saw this little kid like practicing the Ronaldo spin, and like his dad watching, him, and I'm just like, "What? The kill these people should die. Like, who is this dad? <laughs> like, this dad needs to be killed. Like, how that can you? Fucked. How can you encourage such behavior? And it was just a disgusting oh, that's thing. Terrible. That's Shaking terrible. Shaking my head to myself, just SMH. <laughs> SMHing my whole, my whole SMH, <laughs> SMHing the, my damn head. the whole the whole walk alongside the the field. Yeah. Oh my god. Um. On a brighter note, we got three new Patreon signups this week. Hey. Hey. See you in Discord. Chase Kendall, Jason Steenkamp, and then this person inputted their name as friendly mates love slapping asses. So good job by you. Slap the ass. Get in there. Uh, that person wants to be anonymous. Yeah. An they, anonymous you shall be. Yeah, yeah, you successfully did it. Successfully. You've, you've anonymized yourself. Uh, I think that's it, dude. Any well, last bro. words? I'll see you in oh, many days, not at I'll all see tomorrow. You in, in 10 days. Burn! <laughs> Check us out! <laughs> and if you want to like, I'm Paul Sandra, if you want to be a dick, I'm Slash, if you want to subscribe, and if you